Let's make some crappy art! Hello my tasty little cinnamon rolls! Welcome back to another video! This is the beautiful set of crappy art supplies that we'll be using for our video today! <laughs> I actually received this as a Christmas gift, like a gag Christmas gift, a couple of years ago, and I kind of rolled my eyes when I got it, but then I thought, you know, I'm gonna hold on to this just in case it comes in useful at some point in my life, and lo and behold, here we are now. Let me show you guys what's in here, and then we can get on with the painting. Let's be sure to pose with what's inside the box so we have a nice thumbnail. I feel like that red marker there is like a perfect match for my eyeshadow, actually. Okay, so this is the interior of our beautiful artist starter kit. This is literally designed for small children, so I don't have a lot of high expectations for what we're gonna get out of these materials. Yeah, so we have crayons, aptly marked crayon. We've got pencil crayons, or colored pencils, should you not be from Canada. We have, like, felt tip markers, and I really don't want to use these, but we'll see where the kind of painting takes us. I'm not sure which materials I'll be using the most. Um, we have watercolors that are just the chalkiest nonsense you've seen in your life. What even are these supposed to be? Wax pastels, probably? They look like crayons. A pencil sharpener, a tiny little brush, and some paper. Now, I do love myself, so we won't be using this paper for this challenge. Here is the paper we will be using for this challenge. Uh, this is the XL Canson watercolor paper. This is the paper that I use the most for my watercolor techniques, and the reason that I use it the most is because it's cheap, and I'm still kind of like learning and experimenting with watercolors, so I don't want to use super expensive paper for some of that experimental stuff. Um, so this is my go-to, and this is what we'll be using today. Are you guys ready to make some crappy art? All right, my little bun cakes, let's get started. So there actually is no pencil in this set, and I do want to avoid using any sort of materials that weren't a part of this beautiful starter kit that we've got here. So that being said, I'm actually going to use some of the colored pencils, some of the pencil crayons to do our sketch. And I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna stay in my comfort zone because obviously the materials that we're using are outside of my comfort zone. Um, additionally, I hope you guys don't mind the music in the background because I actually can't work in silence. It's just, it's just not humanly possible for me to do that. So let's get going. I think I'm just gonna draw like a cute girl was sort of what I was thinking. If you guys know my work at all, you're probably pretty familiar with this particular subject matter that I am a fan of. I mean, these are very hard colored pencils. They remind me of like Crayola. Uh, I've been using Cezanne and Prismacolors lately, which are pretty high-end pencils. A little bit, a little bit more high-end than these ones, you might say. And I'm just gonna sketch this like really quick. I honestly have no, I don't know what I'm doing right now. So I think we're gonna put a witch hat on her because it just, it wouldn't be a drawing by me without it. I only have about an hour to complete this drawing because I actually have to go out and be somewhere and I'm really smart so I started filming a video. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can get this done kind of quickly. Again, that's the nice thing about drawing things inside of your comfort zone is that like hopefully they can be done pretty quickly. I've also been painting all day, mostly with much nicer materials than this so I'm feeling nice and warm. It's always important to get warmed up before you start painting. And apologies for the frickin', like, shadow. Uh, I have a very amateur setup for filming, so in the future, I will find ways to make things look a little less dark. Now, I usually do my sketching with erasable pencils so that when I make a mistake, I can easily remove the lines, but we're not in it to win it today, we're just in it to have a good time. <laughs> I'm gonna make her a Nako witch because we're living our best life. Okay, let's see if we can erase just a little, some of these lines. Cool! Yeah, totally erasing. Bruh. Invest. Invest in these cheap products because you got yourself some cheap cull erase right here. <laughs> I don't know if I'd press down harder, it probably wouldn't be erasing, but we are cool. Okay, so this paintbrush should be illegal. Do you see this? Are you pe are you people seeing this right now? And okay, so I'm gonna break the rules just a little bit and I'm gonna use real paintbrushes because this is, this is nothing. Just gonna grab a real paintbrush and some water. So let's see how these watercolors work. We'll start, we have like a nice peachy tone here. Start on her 
arm, just in case it looks really gross. Okay, we need more water. Oh yeah. Let's see what happens when we try and, ooh. Someone has a bloody elbow. Weird, but okay. I think my plan is that I'm going to do a base of the watercolor and then go in with pencil crayons to try and like detail it a little bit. That's kind of how I do like my usual art. Um, I really enjoy integrating some pencil lines with my watercolor. Uh, my work is very line art heavy and translating that into a watercolor style has been a nice challenge. And I don't think it's a cop-out. In fact, I think it's cool if you're using like multimedia to complete your work. Kind of makes it unique to you, you know? Okay, I am hating how blotchy this looks, but there's no going back now, folks. Let's try and give her a little sunburn on those shoulders, huh? Okay. Onto the face. I'm so sorry, cute girl, that we have to do this to you. It's nothing personal. I kind of like that the colored pencil stays very put underneath the the watercolor. Like it's not it's not lifting in any way, which does happen with some of the Cali Race type pencils that I'll use. Um, and I kind of like that effect where it will blend with the color of the paint and um, so the sketch will sort of, yeah, sort of vanish into the painting. Uh, but it's not always the look you want, so maybe I will use colored pencils more often. And we're gonna risk it all for a little color on those cheeks. It's hard to describe the quality that these watercolors have, like, they're certainly watercolors, but the blotchiness it's not very sexy though. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. We'll wash that out of there. Let's see, what color hair should she have? I'm thinking green. Let's start with this pale green we've got here. And I'm not even really washing my brush properly. Whoops. It's like I'm setting myself up for failure. Ashy green. Let's do this. Ooh, I actually really like that color. I feel like the blotchy quality almost gives it like a style. It's like, I feel that some people might try and do that intentionally, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't hate it. I don't like it, but I don't hate it. So I'm actually not sure where this um, particular set came from. And again, I got it like two years ago now, so it could definitely be discontinued. But at the end of the day, all of these uh, kid, kid art packs are pretty much a dime a dozen so you could head out to the dollar store to Walmart just look for anything like this and you're gonna end up with pretty similar product I'd say my favorite watercolors to use right now when I'm not using cheap art supplies are um, Turner watercolors I've been using a lot and I got those they were gifted from a brand which was really awesome possum because art supplies are super expensive um, and yeah I've been really enjoying them they're definitely on par with the Windsor and Newton watercolors that I have and I also use uh, what's it called oh Holbein Holbein I don't know Holbein watercolors which were the watercolors that I used originally before I got the Turner watercolors. Um, yeah, and I would definitely recommend all of those if you're looking for some legit watercolors to experiment with. Okay, so interesting. So the skin should be dry now. And because uh, you definitely want to have your water, your base layers dry before you start layering more on top when it comes to watercolor. Oops, well, I mixed it in with the hair. Look at me. Ha! Completely disregarding the advice I just gave you all. I will just Just blend that out a little bit and no one is the wiser now I'm thinking orange for the kitty and orange for the kitty ears that our little Neko witch has Start up there. 
Ooh, now that is some pigment right there, folks. Hot damn. Okay, let's just paint this cat orange. Now I want him to have a little white nose. Every time I'm painting cats, I always forget to put in those cute little white noses that, that they tend to have. I get overexcited laying down the color. And you can't take it away once you've put it down, so you just gotta roll with it when you make those kinds of mistakes. Well, mistakes. We're gonna pull a Bob Ross and just call them happy little accidents. All right, it's really easy to beat yourself up when you're creating art especially when you have a very high standard for yourself that you want to keep, myself included. But at the end of the day, if something doesn't turn out, then like there's no pressure. Like you haven't disappointed yourself. You can just pick it up and try again next time. In fact, I create lots of work that doesn't end up on my social media feeds for one reason or another. And I'm sure that it's stuff that people would be excited about. It's just if I'm not excited about it, then I don't want to share it. Oops, it's not the right color. Oh my god. I'm being so sloppy here also, so my apologies. My technique is is really not on up to snuff for this one here. Okay, so end of the tail is going to be white as well. I'd make his little paws white too, but I purposefully obscured them from view. So we'll let that dry. We'll finish up the other colors. I'm thinking black. Let's see if this black can actually hold up to blackness. We'll start with the shirt. Oh yeah, now that is some black. Actually seems like some of the watercolor is taking a while to dry, which is fair because I did load it with a lot of water just to make sure that I was picking up enough pigment off of the little palettes here. But I ain't got time to wait for this to dry, so we are just going to truck along and hope nothing bleeds too bad. And again, like, I feel like if the colors are bleeding into each other, you can kind of make it work sometimes. Um, it's one of the reasons why I do my line art after doing my colors, is if I make a mistake, I can, I can situate the line art in a way that makes it look like it was intentional. Or conversely, if the line art looks a little janky on the colors, then if the colors also look a little janky, well, it all looks like I did it on purpose. <laughs> art hacks. My hand's really shaky also because I've had like an absolute truckload of coffee today, which is how I live my life every day, so you think my body would be used to it. Again, the watercolor is really fussy, so I don't wanna I don't wanna mess with it too too much. Um are we just gonna do the whole hat black? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One thing that's I think really important when you're doing any sort of art is to be really intentional about your color palette. Um, I personally don't like using more than like five or six colors in my palette and that can include or that doesn't necessarily include different values of the colors that you're using. So you can use a bunch of values of of say green or black you know as a grayscale and have it count as one color. But I think it's just really overpowering when you start like like using every color in the palette here for example. Um, as you can see, we've got red, green, orange, and black, and I think that the skin tone in and of itself is kind of orange too, so it like, it counts as, as the same color, or at least it looks like it, so you can get away with it. <laughs> I'm also ripping through this black right here. These pigments do not go a very long way. Ugh, there's like chalk all over my hand from, from rubbing it on top of the painting. Growing up, I've always been interested in art. It's been a big part of my life for my whole life, and I used to get um, as gifts from relatives, well-meaning but misinformed relatives, like these these sorts of sets of art supplies or like how to draw books even. And as a kid, I was really stubborn, and all I wanted to draw was anime. Um, and so I would get, and I was also like a digital artist mostly by the time I was in my teens. Uh, so yeah, I'd be like, oh, thanks, and then put it in the closet and never ever use any of the art supplies. So upon adding the black, I have decided that I'm going to add, I'm gonna add some of this greeny blue to the hair. So I sometimes find when I'm painting and I add something that has like a darker value, like when I start adding the darker values in, I'll notice areas that need 
a little bit more variation in value. And it's totally okay to like think that you've completed something and then decide to go back and adjust it afterwards. That's the nice part of a watercolor is it's pretty much designed to be layered except for this watercolor which does not react extremely well to its sub layers. Surprising absolutely nobody. Ew, I kind of wish we hadn't done that. Oh well. It's cool. We'll just make it work. Grubby dude. All right. I really can't decide what color to do her eyes. Maybe we'll do them yellow. Because the yellow is like very closely related to both orange and green. So it won't be overbearing to add just a little bit of yellow in. <laughs> My paintbrush is like totally stained black from the black. Maybe I should wash it a little better. Do, 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 do. Yikes. Okay, I'll be happy to be finished with this watercolor in a hot minute here. I'm gonna let this dry and then hopefully we can go in with some uh, pencil crayon and kind of finish it up. I think I'm gonna use the pencil crayons to do the line art here. And again, I'm not gonna worry about this looking too perfect. It has this really like s smooshy quality to it. So I'm just gonna roll with it and make the line art like a little bit more. Mm, I'm gonna call it suggestive. Let's call it suggestive. So I'm gonna grab my tiny little pencil here. Oh my God. No, that's not even gonna be dark enough. We have to use the black. Weird. So crumbly. The feeling of it against my hand is just awful. So chalky. Probably should have painted the eyes here, but that's okay. Cat looks like a brat, which is appropriate, I would say. I feel like I'm gonna have to sharpen this halfway between and I'm definitely definitely going to use the sharpener from the set. I'm also wondering if this is gonna this pencil crayon's gonna smudge with my hand rubbing all over it. I don't usually worry about smudging because I Switched from using graphite pencils to using the Cully Race um, a long time ago. And as a result, I, I specifically did it because, oh shit, that was wet. Whoops. Um, I specifically did it because I didn't want to be working with a pencil that would smudge when my hand ran over it. Let's sharpen this. Ooh. Ugh. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm gonna break the pen. So. So unfortunately, that line of her chin looks j oh no. I was gonna do the hair in green, so let's see if that works anyway, and maybe we won't need the black pencil anymore. Oh, there's so much like, like dust. And I don't know if it's coming from the, the watercolor underneath or the pencil itself, because it wasn't doing that while I was sketching, but I wasn't pressing very hard when I was sketching. I'm not gonna try and sharpen this, guys, so we're just gonna get through. Oh my god. So that's what it is actually, it's picking up the watercolor <laughs> underneath. <laughs> I'm scratching it away. Oh well. I'm gonna like do this like old school style. Did you guys ever do this back when you were a kid? Just grab the lead that falls out to, just to do this ear. But I'm just gonna do the, the nose here in red <sighs> and same with the mouth. I'm like, maybe it's intentional, you know? Maybe I wanted these, these lines to be a different color. You don't know. Mm, now that those are red, I kind of want this to be red too. I like this red pencil, it has gusto. Ooh, I dropped it. I'm actually gonna grab this and just do the ears up here real quick. Ooh. Ooh, close enough. <laughs> <sighs> Bidding starts at a million dollars. Let's just see if we can dress this up a little bit. I have a couple more minutes here. Let's try and add a little more 
our color with our trusty little red pencil who wouldn't ever hurt us. Never ever. I have all these other materials that I should probably try too, but like TBH, it makes more sense for me to just stay with the materials that I'm used to using, which is colored pencils and watercolor. So even though this was a quick one, I think we're gonna call this painting done. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this journey of working with crappy art supplies to make hopefully a somewhat half decent piece of art. If you had fun with me here, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll be back with more in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Outros are awkward. Bye. There's a baby. There's, there's a, there's a baby. Can I poke it? Oh, there we go. I got it. <laughs>